today. It's officially game on here in Yonkers, New York. Perhaps I should say games on. The USAFL Eastern Regional Tournament is taking place today, and we're here to bring you the action. Season number seven of Stateside Footy starts now. On location here at Tibbetts Brook Park in Yonkers, New York, the site of the 2016 USAFL Eastern Regional Tournament. Hello, and welcome to Stateside Footy, the program that features the game of Australian rules football played here in the United States. Alongside camera person Stacey Robert and co-commentator Brian Barish, I'm Bill Robert, and today we kick off a day full of action just north of the Big Apple. The regular Northeast clubs are all here today. The Boston Demons, the Baltimore Washington Eagles, the Philadelphia Hawks, and the host club, the New York Magpies. In addition, we'll also see players from the North Carolina Tigers and the Columbus Jackaroos. We'll also see some women's action today as players from Boston, Baltimore, Washington, Columbus, and Montreal have come to join the New York ladies for a kick here in the park. And also, USAFL media manager Brian Barish will join us for the call of today's games, which will start up right after the break. Up first, a mid-Atlantic rivalry as the Baltimore Washington Eagles face the Philadelphia Hawks. We'll bring it to you next, right here on Stateside Footy. Action just about underway here in the Eastern Regional Tournament from the USAFL. And today we have the Philadelphia Hawks who are playing in the gold and brown uniforms and the Baltimore Washington Eagles who are playing in the white and the blue. So here we go. They've got the ball. They're getting everyone in position right now. We're just about set to uh, toss the ball up and uh, get this one underway here as the umpire makes sure everyone is in position. Up goes the ball. Off goes the whistle. There we go. And the ball will now be tossed into play, and we'll have official action. Up it goes, and it's tossed, uh, actually hit out of uh, the ruck there by uh, Chris Pate. Chris Bate, actually uh, a guest from the uh, New York Magpies. He's one of their players right now. Philadelphia doesn't have the full 18. So in a few cases today, you'll see some of the sides will have players in from other teams to help them make the 18. But anyway, it goes now to John Loring. Loring uh, with a nice kick headed to the Philadelphia end of the ground. Bounces off a set of hands, and the Hawks look to move it forward. Punched out there, winds up in Baltimore, Washington hands. Now the Eagles kick it ahead and trying to get somebody a uh, target on the wing there. However, it's spoiled and winds up to going to ground, but the... Eagles are able to get a chain of handballs off, and they go through the ground. Anyway, that kick is smothered. That's a nice uh, move there. And let's see, it goes in here, and it's going to wind up. That uh, little spot you see there with the cones, there's actually a little bit of a divot on the ground. So what they do is if the play goes near there, they stop it so some, someone doesn't put a leg in that divot or someone uh, something and mess up an ankle or a knee or something. I remember there was actually a game at Baltimore, Washington a few years ago where there was a, a hidden rut in the field and someone hit it and uh, had a really bad knee injury as a result. And once again, uh, we have a whistle, and I believe it's going to be a free kick. It's going to be awarded to the Philadelphia Hawks. I believe it's going to be John Loring with it now. And will we try and boom another one like he did already? Nope, he just tries a little pass out to the wing. It's going to take a bounce and wind up in Philadelphia hands. Kicked forward, rolls, skips. Doesn't really sit for everyone. Actually, it does sit as uh, they kick it forward now. Kick goes in toward the sticks, and it's marked there. Nice job by the Baltimore-Washington back line in taking that intercept mark, and they play on. They handball it right off, and they try and kick it out to the fat side. It is spoiled. It goes to ground right now. Hawks just try and soccer it off the deck. They're trying to move it ahead right now, looking to get any type of a scoring structure. Loose in front, and I believe that's going to be Nick Walk who gets a foot to it and is actually able to push it through the big sticks. So we've got the first scoring shot of the match. It goes to the Philadelphia Hawks in the form of a major score. And right now the score is Philadelphia one straight six and Baltimore yet to score. So right there and then, here we go. 
Philly with some early action here. And uh, by the way, today, if, if you hear a bit of a, a trip up, uh, please uh, bear with me. I know I call these teams a lot, but still, Philadelphia, obviously, when you think NFL, you've got the Philadelphia Eagles, but today Philadelphia is playing the Eagles. So my brain wants to throw those two terms together. I'm like, no, 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 do not. So if you hear me trip, I, I apologize in advance, but so far, so good as the ball goes up once again. And it's uh, tapped out of the ruck there by Tracy Williams Jr., but then kicked in by the Hawks. And uh, Ball skips into the Philadelphia zone once again, heading for their goals, and doesn't really sit for anyone yet. Goes to ground. There's a big pile up there, a bunch of players on it, and the umpire will just call and say, my ball. Early action in the first half here. Right now, Philadelphia leading Baltimore Washington by a straight kick, and Baltimore Washington, nice job there, hitting it out to advantage, and they've got the clearance, and they're trying to move it up right now. It's marked, and here we go. They're coming through the corridor. Eagles with it now. Handball goes off, and they get it over to Williams. Williams handballs over, and... Kick into the Baltimore-Washington zone. Goes, oh, right into the hands of a waiting Philadelphia Hawk. Nice job there with that defensive mark. He's looking for Loring on the wing, and it's spoiled. Loring trying to get it. He handballs it off right now, and Philly once again moving it to their half of the ground. As the kick goes up, it is spoiled. Goes to ground, takes a bit of a skip. Continues along, though, and uh, they're trying to handball it away. And it continues deep in the wing. They're trying to kick it forward now. Handball out once again by Philadelphia. And kicked back into the zone there. The kick there by uh, number eight, who actually, I don't see that number here. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Pat Miller. Pat Miller with the uh, kick there. And uh, we've got a kick right there. Goes to ground now. Just uh, kind of punched out of the air, but uh, they'll allow it. And the Hawks are off. I'm sorry, the Eagles are off once again. And they're on the move. They trail by a straight kick right now. Philly trying to move it forward, just tapping it. Once again, trying to get the ball to sit for him. And it's going to go right by him and out of bounds. Therefore, we will have a boundary throw in. Good result, though, for Philadelphia as it comes in their uh, left half forward flank as the ball comes in from the boundary line. And Philly, the only ruckman there. However, he can't get it to a target as it bounced off his hand. And it's going to roll and go back. So we will have another boundary throw in. as once again this ball will be put up for grabs after going over the boundary line. Just a reminder, lots of footy to be had today here on Stateside Footy. We're actually doing a series of episodes from this Eastern Regional Tournament, so uh, please do stay tuned. And uh, Hawks almost escaped with it, but not quite. Tapped ahead, and it bounces, and who'll get there first? It'll be Philly. Handball goes off. He juggles it, but he's able to get it. Another handball's off, gets it to Miller now. And Miller just kicks it in toward the sticks, and that looks like, well, it got there, but it's offline. Pat Miller with the kick there for the uh, Hawks. However, it's going to go through for a minor score. That increases Philadelphia's lead right now, though. They lead 1-1-7, and Baltimore-Washington actually still yet to really get any type of action near their goals as they take the kick in from their own back goal square. And, oh, that's a beautiful mark in the middle of two players. He juggled it but kept his concentration and was able to come down with it. He kicks it now, and uh, that is uh, gotten there by Robert Edwards. And here we go. Eagles on the march. It goes over everybody. Heading for the goals right now. Philly will be there first to pick it up, but then he is hauled down. And it looks like that might be a push in the back, a free kick there. And that's going to be called against Nick Siska, number 56. And it's kicked out on the wing, and here come the Hawks. Hawks with it now. Another kick along the wing, looking for a target. It's going to go over a couple of heads, then be retrieved by the Eagles. Baltimore, Washington in action once again as they try and kick it back up the other side through the wing. However, the ball rolls along the ground and goes offline and goes over the boundary. So we'll have a boundary throw in just about at the center wing on the far boundary here. Baltimore up by seven, first half here on stateside footy. I'm sorry, not Baltimore, uh, Philadelphia. Baltimore, Washington trailing by seven, actually. And it's kicked ahead into the zone and uh, loose ball, but it's going to head towards the sticks. And with it now, that's uh, C.J. Adams. C.J. Adams with a goal! First kick for the Baltimore Washington Eagles and young C.J. Adams, who's 16 years of age, gives his team six. And all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Philly up right now, 1-1-7. Baltimore Washington, one straight six. And Adams, we've actually seen C.J. before a couple years ago at Nationals, but we didn't see him as a player. We saw him actually as a goal umpire in a couple of the games there. I remember Brian was uh, bringing him up. Just mentioning him uh, from time to time. But uh, there he is. He's playing now. And he actually kicked the first goal for the Eagles. Just was able to get back. Basically, the uh, goal square area was unattended. And he was able to just get it and uh, get it right to the boot and kick it through. And now the uh, ruck won by the Eagles as they continue to move ahead. And looks like we've got a stoppage and a possible free kick. And that free kick is actually going to 
John Loring. And Loring will get it to the boot now, and he'll send it out. And almost marked, but not quite. There's a battle for it on the ground now. Uh, trying to go over once again. That's uh, Robert Edwards for the Eagles. Heading for the boundary line once again. And the Hawks take it now. They try and center it. And just try and get something going here. Loose ball. Someone's trying, at this point, they're just trying to soccer off the deck or kick or hit something. And a little kick there didn't quite go 15, so Ryan Cartwright takes it and kicks it out for the Eagles. And Baltimore Washington on the move right now. A handball in traffic. Here we go. Kick out wide now looking for uh, Williams on the wing. And it's gotten Tracy Williams Jr. there, number 60. And he's going to get it to the boot. And let's see. Oh, uh, Adams going for it. However, it's just going to uh, go out of bounds, looks like. Actually, no, it's going to stay in. Looks like it might have gone out of bounds. Now it's going to go out of bounds. After a few bodies go down. Still a good result for the uh, Eagles, obviously, though, as it's uh, going to come in deep in their attacking territory. And once again, the rucks line up. You're going to see uh, Chris Bate. I mentioned him before. He was going to do the rucking duties today for Philadelphia. And uh, they actually have a couple. And you see Bate right there, actually. They have a couple of ruckmen. Their usual ruckman, Alex Lydon, not able to make the trip today. Uh, so they have a couple of people filling in. And the kick along the wing, and it's loose, and it goes. Actually, I'm sorry, it's marked. It's marked, and oh, he tried to kick it ahead, but he kind of shanked it off the side of his boot, and it just rolls through. And right now, it's, it's basically a pinball shot here as the Eagles try to get it. Oh, he's taken, almost taken high. No free kick paid there. Play on, says the umpire. And once again, kick to the outer wing. And still going right now. We've got a lot of action there. Battle for it. And kick back in toward the Philadelphia end. And once again, they're cruising it near the boundary as we continue play here. And it's moving through. And it looks like it's going to go out. Indeed it does. We'll have another boundary throw in. In the shadow of the Philadelphia attacking goals. Tossed up once again. Hit out to advantage. Nice job there by Philly. Tries to make some space for himself there. Tried to get it to the boot. But he's pinged for holding the ball. Nice tackle by the Eagles. And they're going to bring it right back. Once again, they kick it right up the corner. Adams can't get there in time. So it's a race for it now. And oh, nice shepherd there. <laughs> nice, nice shepherd uh, there. I believe that was uh, number uh, what, 52. I believe that's uh, Siren. Fi I'm, I'm sorry, that's Dobzanski, 57. Double check. Uh, sometimes when you get older, the eyes go. And it's hard to see those jumper numbers sometimes. But anyway, Hawks have it now. And they punch it ahead. Looking for... And not quite getting their target as it's marked in defense by the Eagles. And they'll kick it back once again. Oh, they had the target, but then he was on the run. But he's still able to get back and get it. And they handball it off. And here come the Eagles once again. Right now, Eagles trailing by a point. 1-1-7 one, one, to one straight six. And, oh, that was a nice job there to kick it right out of the air. Didn't go 15 on the uh, subsequent catch, though. This one does, though. They'll pay the mark. And he's just going to take it for a second. Get some targets. And it's marked out on the... Uh, Ooh, marked down to the corner. And he was uh, taking a little, little bit there. I believe that was uh, Danny Seo who had it there. Lucky he uh, let go in time. Otherwise, the umpire could have paid 50. Uh, soccer to head right there off the ground now. They're just looking to do anything for it. A snap kick off the ground, and it looks to roll. It's right in front of the goals, but then loses steam. And uh, Eagles looking to move once again. Here we go. And the kick into the center of the ground. Takes a hop. Winds up in Baltimore, Washington hands. That's uh, Andrew Manfredi, number 13. Kicked in now toward the sticks and not marked. I thought it was going to be marked, but uh, he wasn't able to hang on to the ball. And there's just a big rush for it there. Someone finally got a boot to it and just put it over. Not sure if that was a, a Philly foot or maybe it was a rush behind. But anyway, uh, the result is another point for Philadelphia. So right now their score is one goal, two behinds, eight points. And the... Eagles still at one straight six. And a nice mark after that kick out from Baltimore, Washington. And kicked out now and going. And it's going to take a weird bounce. A couple of weird bounces. And uh, continues to move through, though. With it there, that was uh, number 29. That's uh, Scott Bradford for the Eagles. Goes over. It goes back to Bradford now. Almost back to Bradford. Actually, nice job there. Just tipping up to his hand. The ball rolled. He just tapped it off the uh, off the toe. Just toe poked it right into his own hands. But then as they, um, after that, right after that, he got wrapped up. So... It'll be another toss-up here, as the umpire calls for it. Hit out to advantage by Williams, and then the subsequent kick. That's out on the full. So Philly will get the free kick. Or will they? 
It looked like it might have gone out of the full, but once again from this angle, kind of hard to see the boundary lines at times. And let's see. Okay, they're going to toss it to an umpire, so I thought it was out on the full. Actually, it was out on the full because they're giving it to uh, the Philly player now for the uh, free kick. So it was out on the full against Baltimore, Washington. So Philly will take the free kick now. Just a little kick, trying to get it to uh, somebody, anybody. And it's picked up now by Seau. Handballed out. And, oh, he juggled it. Couldn't hang on to it. And the ball's going to go back over the boundary. So we will have another boundary throw in here. Eight to six right now in favor of Baltimore, Washington. I'm sorry, in favor of Philadelphia. Baltimore, Washington once again trailing. And once again, they're trying to, oh, a nice little bit of a bicycle kick there. And almost marked. Philly takes it, though, and they're going to take a running bounce, and they're just going to try and move on the far end of the ground here. And bounces off one of the Eagles. Bounces actually in the hands of another Eagle. And he's wrapped up, but he's able to handball it off. Sold his teammate into trouble, though, as he was wrapped up just as he got the ball. And the Hawks now with it. Nice handball there. And here we go. No, almost a nice handball. Well, it was a nice handball because it basically went ahead of the player. He just wasn't able to corral it. So uh, Philly once again with a handball out, looking for John Loring. Winds up going to one of his teammates, and he kicks it forward now. Goes over everybody, though, and it'll skip, it'll roll, and it'll go out, and it'll be a boundary throw in once again in the shadow of the Philadelphia goals. 8-6 to six right now. Hawks are in the lead. The Philadelphia Hawks. Leading Baltimore, Washington right now as they do another throw in. Here we go. Tossed in. And the rucks will go. Doesn't really hit anyone, though. And uh, comes out. And looking for almost getting his target there once again. That was uh, uh, my, actually Michael Gilbart, number 29. And here we go. Eagles on the march. They kick it up right now into their forward half. And who's going to get it? Uh, the Hawks will get it. Looked like they had a bit of a rush there, but then the Hawks came up with it. And the kick going out to the wings now over to Pat Miller. Miller gets it to the boot. And he kicks it across, and a spoil by the Eagles. Nice spoil there by Cartwright. And Chris Bate really couldn't get a good handle on it. Just kept uh, rolling forward. So as a result, it'll be another boundary throw in here on the uh, near boundary on the wing as it toss, toss back in right now. And punched out. And uh, once again, after that contest, it just goes right back out. And it'll be tossed in once again. Late action in the first half of this one right now. Philadelphia up by two points as they hit it out right into Hawk hands. Kicked ahead. However, um, not really able to uh, move with it there. And let's see. Uh, Loring has it now. He handballs it off to a teammate. And then here we go. Philly on the march once again. And the kick heading for the sticks. And let's see here. It'll take a quick bounce. And they'll try and move it back out and play, but you see all the outstretched arms there. Philadelphia saying, hey, out in the full. We want a free kick here. As Baltimore Washington tried the escape play, and it just didn't fly. Well, actually, <laughs> I should rephrase myself. It did fly, but uh, not in the direction the uh, player wanted that kick to go. So as a result, the kick will be a tough angle, though, from Baltimore Washington. Coming out at a super tough angle. But he's just going to wrap it around, try a centering ball, and it's just going to fall to ground. And Bate gets it. Can't put a boot to it, though. And we've got a loose ball. And Seau tries to get it, too. And they just kick it toward the sticks, punched over, and that's going to be punched. And it's going to actually stay in play. And Seau has it now, and he's going to kick it once again toward the center of the ground. And here we go. Kick coming out now. And uh, lead. However, it's taken away by the Hawks. And the ball's going to roll, and it's... Going to roll out of play once again, trying to get it there, was Ted Heron for the Hawks. Didn't quite happen, and we've got another boundary throw in as everyone gets back in position. Toss goes up again, and we've got a whistle. And I think uh, they're going to, yep, they're going to do a do-over. Kind of like back when you were doing uh, football in the par in the on the street or in the backyard. Oh, we've got a do-over. Car coming, or something like that. <laughs> anyway, coming out of the uh, contest now. Eagles move it ahead, and the ball's still moving forward, but then Philadelphia gets it, kicks, kicks it back, and Bate tries to get it there. He's got it now. Gets it to the boot, just puts it in the general area, hopes one of his teammates gets to it, and here we go. Oh, he sidesteps, gets it to the, no, doesn't get it to the boot. Tried to get it, just couldn't kick it, and as a result, pinged for holding the ball, 
And the free kick going to Baltimore, Washington. Kick out toward the wing. And, oh, that's actually was going out, uh, but then took another weird bounce and came in. And Seau, oh, his kick is smothered by Philadelphia, but Williams has it now. And Williams will just kick it ahead. Nice mark there, and they're going to play on. Here we go. Eagles on the march, moving in. And let's see there. It's going to be uh, not marked, actually, and taking it there. Uh, the kick, it looks like it might go a little wide. No adopt. That's a goal. So there we go. First time in the contest here, first time in the match, Baltimore Washington taking the lead and doing so by kicking straight. Right now the score stands Baltimore Washington, two straight 12, and Philadelphia, one, two, six. So a nice job by the Eagles there uh, just uh, getting the ball. And one of the things is if, if they, 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 it kind of looks like watching New York play sometimes because if they get an opportunity, they can just move the ball up the field at such great speed. And before you know it, you're, you're backing up and you know the ball blew by you and you don't know what happened. Uh, they try and move it out of the center contest once again. But it's kicked out, and I believe that's uh, Loring once again. But uh, they kick it ahead now. And that looks like, let's see, that's going to stay. Did that st No, that's out on the full. That looked really close, but the kick wound, wound up going out on the full, which means uh, Danny Seau for the Baltimore Washington Eagles will take the free kick. Danny Seau, coming from Australia, actually spent some time with the Collingwood Magpies of the AFL. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that was Seau here. Who was who? Who was the uh, other player down there that looked like Seau? But no, that's Seau. That was the intended target. Anyway, number three, you see there, that's Seau, and he was the one uh, who uh, spent some time in the Collingwood organization. And once again, here we go. Tossed up for grabs. And it just goes past everybody. Nobody really trying for it. Loring gets it down, handballs it up. And he's trying. Oh, he's wrapped up, but he's able, somehow able to get it to Loring. But he sold Loring into trouble as Loring was wrapped up right away. And then get pinged for holding the ball. A uh, nice tackle there from a number two, Robert Strange, as the ball goes to center now. And trying to pick it up there. Eagles once again coming out, and Seau's got it now. Seau sidesteps a tackle, kicks it in, and it's marked. And he'll stop. He'll take the free kick right there. That's uh, number 55. That's Nick Siska taking the free kick after that mark. Here we go. And it's just a little bit of a line drive kick. Bounces past a teammate and winds up in Philly hands, and they'll bring it right back out as they go into the far boundary now. Hawks on the move. He's tackled. Ball goes to ground. Eagles come back. Handball ahead. Handball back. Just trying to do something with it. He kicks, and that kick is going to go across the face of goal, it looks like. Indeed, it was a promising moment there for Baltimore Washington, but that kick coming in went across the face of goal. Nobody could get to it. So it's going to be out. And that's halftime. The score stands right now. Baltimore, Washington, two goals, no behinds, 12 points. And Philadelphia, one goal, two behinds, eight points. Coming up next, we'll have the conclusion of this match and much more action here on Stateside Footy. Australian rules football in the U.S.? That's right. The United States Australian Football League is in a city near you. Go to USAFL.com. Find your team. Check them out. We're a group full of men and women just like you. Join us for the fun athletic competition. Stay for the camaraderie. We won the champion! Log on and sign up to join your team at USAFL.com. Second half action about to start here right now. The Philly Hawks trailing the Baltimore Washington Eagles by a score of 12 to 8. So far the... Uh, Hawks with more scoring shots, but the Eagles, they only have uh, two scoring shots, but both of them were uh, much straighter. So uh, getting set to uh, toss it up once again to begin the second half of this one. Brian Barish alongside Bill Robert here for Stateside Footy, and we're at the Eastern Regional Tournament put on by the USAFL. Brian can tell us a little bit about that as it uh, goes on. As the ball goes up and the, uh, the whistle goes off, and we're just about to rock and roll here. Ball goes up, and we are out once again, and uh, tip to no clear advantage. However, Philly takes it. Handball go goes off a hand. And it uh, comes out to the wing there. Eagles have it now. They put it ahead. Seau kicks it into Eagles attacking territory. Big collision there under the ball, but the Hawks come away with it. And that's a bit of a line drive. Looking for not getting his target as it was spoiled at the last minute. But the Hawks have it now. And they kick it in. It's a long kick. And let's see where it's going to roll. It looks like it's going to go and uh, go right through for a minor. 
So that's the third minor score for the Philly Hawks, and now it's a two straight 12 for the Eagles and 1-3-9 for the Hawks. And the Eagles now taking the kick in from their own back goal square. Low kick, though, almost picked up by the Hawks there. Working on it there was Ray Casella. Uh, Good back. shepherd. Great, great shepherd. And the Hawks once again uh, trying to move with it. Handball back. Goes to Loring now. Up, oh, we've got a push in the back and a free kick. And the free kick is going to the Hawks. Yeah, that's a good call right there uh, on uh, uh, 56, which was Kit Drury on Christian Decker. So here comes Decker, who will go back. This will be about uh, 40 meters out, a 45-degree angle. And the veteran from Victoria will strike this one pretty nice that off pretty the good. boot. But oh, it's short and a nice mark, mark right in front. by Jonathan Ginsburg. He plays like Rewalt and looks like Barry Hall. So here is Rewalt from dead out in front. Oh no, or what are they going to say? Oh, they say he pushed the other player out of the contest. Oh wow. Well, that was that could have gone either way. I'm not going to dispute the the umpire right there. It was right on the line, but uh, that's actually a big break for the Eagles as Seau up on the far side. He's going to kick that one in short. It's going to go in on a hop on a couple of hops over the head of Chris Casey. Casey then gets knocked backwards, goes whoop, 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 and then picked up by uh, Miller. Miller can't get to it. Whiting is in there, and it looks like some co high contact in the contest. And indeed, the uh, yep. kick is going to Philly. And right now, that footy out there is looking like a Mexican jumping bean and a hot potato had a baby. A Mexican potato, which actually sounds really good right now. Oh, nice yeah. mark oh, yeah. by Greg Glasgow. So the Perthite Greg Glasgow will go back. He puts up a high ball, higher than my cats in a catnip patch, as it's batted towards goal by uh, Decker, picked up off the ground in the last line of defense. It's still there on the ground. Knocked forward again. Cassell is in there against Levesque. He's pushed out of the way. Levesque tries to get it through and then spun out of the way nicely. And then we have a whistle, and it's going to be a looks like a throw-in right on right next to the uh, behind post, Bill. Yes, indeed it is. And once again, uh, good result for the Hawks as they look to add to their score. Once again, they trail by uh, three points right now, or 0.5 kicks if you're doing the statistical thing. And get Eagles out your calculator. Out. Yeah, uh, nice toe poke ahead there by uh, I believe that was once again uh, uh, the new guy there. Uh, nice, nice mark. mark. And again, it's Decker. So Chris Decker has actually asserted himself pretty well as a key forward in the absence of Ryan McGettigan. Nice mark in stereo there, Brian. Yes. <laughs> so here is Decker's kick. It is dead, center, Bingo. perfect. And the Hawks have hit the front. 2-3-15 Philadelphia, two straight, two, uh, two straight 12 for Baltimore, Washington. And again, that's some good leads in there by Decker, the veteran. And that's really the key. And that's something that the Hawks had last week against New York, Bill, was they were getting those good leads in front, but they weren't converting on them. And against New York, it, 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 it cost them. But here against the Eagles, it's it's they're, they're making them pay. Yeah, they're, they're back in the lead now. Obviously, uh, each team has two goals. Main difference right now, the three minors kicked by Philly as, once again, it's hit out to advantage by the Eagles. And it goes over to Cartwright now. Cartwright Whoops. trying to move with it. And... Uh, Loses the touch. I think Loring almost had it there. Race for it now. Tough footy there on the uh, just about uh, center part of the ground there. Jay, Le got a whistle. Jay Levesque um, uh, trying to cut the ball behind his back. Looked like he was trying to carry his baby through the Alps there. <laughs> and the toss goes up, and everyone misses it. Winds up going to ground, and toe poked ahead by the Hawks. They're trying to move with it now. Goes back to ground, and that's going to roll out, and I believe we'll have another boundary throw in. Another key uh, a miss for the Hawks is Alex Leiden, who's not in, and they're actually using Chris Bate, who's on loan for New York, who's actually doing a pretty good job in the ruck, and he's pretty sizable. Here is um, here's a Whiting with a long kick. That's going to roll towards goal, chasing after the players from both teams, but it's going to go over for another behind. So a point for the Hawks is that extends the lead to four. That's the difference. Two goals, four for Philly, 16. Baltimore-Washington, uh, Baltimore, two straight. That's the difference. That's four points on the scoreboard. And the kick in once again from the back goal square by the Eagles. And almost marked there, went off the hands of Keith Thornburg. Thornburg still battling for it. He's pushed. That was actually a push in the back. He got away with one there. And uh, with it now, that's uh, Drury. Looking for C.J. Adams. He's got him. Nice, nice mark. mark. Just before the boundary line. And C.J. gets it to the boot and puts a mighty wallop into it. And it goes over everyone. 
And uh, the chase is still on. And it's going to wind up going out and out on the full. Whose foot did it go off of? That's the question. It looks like it looks like it's going to be Philly free kick. Mm -hmm. Looked like the Hawks were uh, moving in. Uh, not the Hawks. I'm sorry, the Eagles. Oh, they're all birds. But, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, almost, almost over the top. to Specky there by Drury, and uh, Seau gets without taken the ball. down. Or no? Yeah, no. It was uh, it was without the ball. It looks like. Okay. No, it, okay, so he pointed in the direction of the Hawks, it looks like, but it is going to be, it is, it's going to be, I think he was pointing, just pointing at the mark. Yep, so yeah, here's Seau. Yeah, because uh, it was uh, John Loring that gave up that free kick. Uh, and actually, it's not going to be Seau, it's going to be uh, number 41, who is uh, Andrew Issa. Lynn. Oh, no, it? Anton Andrew? Issa. Anton Issa, okay. Got to get out the, the barished English dictionary, I Bill. guess so. Uh, the bounce is over everyone's hands once again, and uh, Hawks trying to move the battle for it on the ground right now. And we got a whistle, and the umpire will say, my ball. He talked about uh, the this sort of this is actually the second of the USAFL regional tournament series. Bill, we began two weeks ago in Indianapolis, Indiana, with the Central Regionals. And July 16th, we'll be in uh, Salem, Oregon, for the Western Regionals. Excellent. So the uh, toss-up comes out, and it's uh, nice clearance there by the Hawks. But then they can't chain the possessions forward, and it's a loose ball now in the far wing. And Eagles trying to move with it. Handball winds up in the hands of a Hawk. Here comes Philly. Loring's got it now. He gets it to the boot. Marked. Uh, Nice mark by Ray Casella, the shortest guy on the field. So here's Casella in his third season. Hey, height doesn't matter. Hands does. Yes. Remember uh, Motlop in the 2011 Grand Final against two taller Magpies? Exactly. There's a short one in. Two Hawks are there, and oh, I think they might have canceled each other out. They did. It picked up and then handballed back, and then onward they go through the auspices of number seven, which is uh, Ryan uh, Kamoff. And now up the... Uh, up that far side, the Hawks have it now on the ground. Williams is in there, and he plays Johnny Bench waiting for the ball to, to come out, but the umpire crosses his arms like the Monsignor and says, let's have a ball up. <laughs> Brian Barish alongside Bill Robert. Great to have you here on Stateside Footy. The USAFL Eastern Regional Tournaments here as uh, this Division II matchup between the Hawks for Philadelphia and the Baltimore-Washington Eagles. The Hawks up by four points. Play action up on that far side. Everyone's down. Well, there's a couple of mushroom farmers over there, and again, we'll have a ball up. I think with play action is you have to sell the run first. That's oh, true. Oh, sorry, wrong code. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Ball up in the air again and again, uh, going up over the top there for those the the ruck uh, Drury. Drury is a high flyer today. He's climbing on ladder on people like they were step ladders. Ball goes to ground. Co is in there again, as is Whiting for Philadelphia. Picked up by Brad Gower. He'll go short. Loring couldn't find his feet. Now he gets the ball on a nice hop. He'll put the ball onto his right. Long kick up the far side, but going back to mark it again. One of the Eagles, he's going to play that one out into the center of the ground. Again, looking for, I thought looking for Drury, but a whistle. And they're going to play on, it looks like, as Levesque continues. He puts it onto his left, and, and it it's going like off to the side. Yep. First minor score for Baltimore, Washington. That takes him on to 2-1-13, lead back to three points. Philadelphia, 2-4-16, Bill. All right, once again, the uh, Hawks will take the uh, – actually, I should I say once again, but uh, this is the first time the Hawks have had to take the uh, kick from their own back goal square today. And so far, both scoring shots from uh, Baltimore-Washington have been straight and true. But now, here comes the kick in, trying to set some folks up. And it goes along the far wing. And he's got it. He marks it, and he's going to play on. Handball off, and they're doing it. Here we go. They're moving it right through center. Nicely done. They've got a target set up in front, and, oh, it goes to ground. Race for it now picked up and that's uh glasgow glasgow kicks it almost all the way to scotland uh coming back though is the, the hawks as they uh rebound it right back into attack and who's going to get there first it bounces past everybody that's the thing sometimes you know there are some spots on the ground here at tibbets brook and uh, as a result sometimes that uh, footy can take some unpredictable bounces kick now in from the uh boundary oh boy intercept marked right in front there Good job by young Trey Thatcher for Philadelphia to have the confidence to throw it onto his left foot. It's a kick out up on that far side now. Thatcher in again, but a nice mark over the top, I believe, by Bort Edwards. So Edwards up on that far side. He'll kick it up on that wing in the intense side of the ground. That's because there are people in tents over there. And the ball rolls over and out, out of bounds for a boundary throw and on the wing position. And once again, uh... We'll bring the ball back into play here. Everyone's setting up. The Rucks get ready. 
But yeah, the, you had already mentioned, but uh, one of the things I was wondering, just obviously not seeing Leiden out there today, because he is one of the best rucks in the country, as uh, it kicks in now, and we've got, oh, it goes over everybody, but right now, Baltimore, Washington, not quite having numbers, but they've got numbers near the ball. Player goes down, and now that's uh, Glasgow again. He kicks it in, and that looks like it's going to be a uh, minor. Yes, indeed. And it stayed to the left, just like Scotland wants to stay in the EU. <laughs> EU. 2-5-17 now for the uh, Eagles, uh, for the Hawks rather, 2-1-13. I think we may Eagles. need to make a Brexit from those jokes. <laughs> I think so. No, I already had Brexit, Brexit this morning. Had it's, some sausage. It was really good. Yeah, it's the most important meal of the day. Actually, does Brexit mean your breakfast comes back up? Oh, on oh, oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. We're, we're ticking off a lot of English people right now. So yes. We'll probably get back to the game. <laughs> Even my <laughs> wife is waving us off here. Kicked up ahead and marked. And, oh. He was going to play on, play on, but then he thought better of it. I think I think it ended up being pushed in the back there on Issa. And uh, Thatcher now kicks it in. That's going to land out on the full. Looking for uh, Johnny Ginsburg. And uh, didn't quite get it there, so it's a free kick now for Baltimore, Washington. And he'll just get it to the boot, looking to set it. And he gets a right to say, say how juggles it, though. He can't keep him, he can't hang on to it. He's able to handball it back, though, and here we go again. Seau's got it now. He kicks it up. Oh, it almost looked like it was a little bit of a torp there, uh, just the way the ball was flying. But uh, Oh, that's a shepherd and a half. Holy holy moly. And the kick from the Eagles. Didn't see who got the boot to it. It's but, Adams. Uh, C.J. Adams with a second. C.J. Adams again. So 3-1-19. And once again, Baltimore-Washington hit the front. And that is Adams' second goal of the match. C.J. Adams, the youngest player in the US, USAFL at the age of 16, wow. and is the son of, of Chris Adams, longtime member of, actually started in Philadelphia before moving to D.C. Ad, uh, Chris Adams is, uh, I think, among the pioneers of the game. He's done coaching. He's played. He's done, a, a, he had U.S. footy news back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but C.J. coming up through the Washington Junior Saturday morning footy program, really its first, uh, its first recipient. So, uh, back to a two-point lead for Baltimore-Washington, and that one will go in deep, but going back to get it there Siska. is uh, Siska. Siska. Nice looked like move there. Yeah, good job. Looked like, uh, looked like a little bit of a Siska. Goes one hop in on bait. They converge. Williams is in there, had his legs taken out from under him. Uh, it's paddled on the ground, and then uh, getting into a headlock there was, uh, was McLean, and it will be a ball up. And once again, that's uh, going to be just about at um, half forward here if you're uh, – Point of view of the Hawks goes up once again and tapped out. Uh, not really to advantage though, but it winds up going into the hands of Levesque. Levesque kicks it ahead now, and he's got Adams. Oh, it's actually going to go too far for Adams. Adams giving chase right now, but the Hawks will get there first, but they're not going to be able to field it cleanly. As a result, it's going to be out of bounds. It'll be a boundary throw in. And uh, I'll take it once again. A good result for uh, Baltimore Washington is just in the shadow of their goals as once again it's hit, hit, hit out. Oh, they tried to kick at an off angle, but it was smothered. Another kick in by Adams. That's rolling, and it's going to go right across the face of goal. And the Hawks will pick it up, and they'll rebound it into attack. Here they come on the far wing. And now they're going to kick it back in the center, look to go up the corridor, and it's marked right there by uh, Jay Whiting. And Whiting will kick it ahead. They're continuing to go up the corridor, and almost oh. marked there by uh, Casella. And off the ball. Off the ball, and uh, free kick actually is going to Casella. Yeah, you can't tackle somebody off the ball. Casella doing a great job of going after it. He earns the free kick, looking for Miller, but it was in short. It bounces nicely to Brad Gower, who throws it onto the right foot. It's heading left, it's sailing left, and, and it is out going out of bounds yeah. on the full. So it looked like one of my Aunt Marcy's cookies. It looked pretty good coming out of the oven and then crumbled into nothing in the end. <laughs> and a free kick. And here they come in a, in a hurry. Here's Kamuf. Long kick up the right side. Casey got his paw to it. Running onto it is Minot. Or Minot, sorry. And it looks like uh, looks like a push in the back, I think. That almost looked more like a horse collar tackle. Where's Terrell Owens? Retired. <laughs> yeah. Free kick to Nick Walk. Retired, thinking he's still good enough to play. Exactly. So here's Nick Walk. First game of the season for him looking for Glasgow just over the top. He wished he was a little bit taller. Whacked forward with the left hand by uh, by Levesque. And then the ball goes to ground. It's picked up by Glasgow. He fumbled it. He jumbled it. 
Whiting is taken down. It's a crash boom opera in the middle of the park. And finally, Cartwright throws it onto his right foot. It's out of the uh, foot of Drury. Drury can't get it. Walk takes him down, picks it up, foot, uh, handballs it over to the far side. And then they look and they find Sale, who's immediately wrapped up by Pat Miller over and out for a boundary throw. And uh, a very, uh, a, a very uh, skittish uh, uh, play there, very tepid play there uh, uh, for both teams. As the saying goes, they sold him into trouble. Yep. So... Got a little less than five minutes to go here in the game. Baltimore, Washington still up two, Bill. And uh, the kick uh, heading towards center now, and still lose. Hawks get it right now. They need to do something here as they are trailing, and time is running out. Going on the far wing there, that's uh, Manfredi. Can't quite get it, though. Handball goes up, and that's going to roll out. That'll be uh, another boundary throw in. Hawks not really getting as many, you know, they're, they're getting as – not as many chances forward, it looks like, but they're they're packing it in when they need to defensively. They're just going to need to figure out how to get some sort of counterattack. I think I just heard. Uh, let's, let's, I heard another whistle. Oh, they're no, gonna they're going to redo the throw. It looks ah, like because it came straight up over. in the air. Yes. Call a tow truck over. Over. Oh, all right, you. Roger over. Over under. Over under. We have Clarence. Clarence. There you go. And the kick goes in nicely marked. Ginsburg. Lined up the target. And uh, with it now, that's. Uh, John Ginsburg. John Ginsburg. Okay, he kicks it ahead and trying to mark it in uh, traffic there. One of the Eagles, at, uh, one of the Hawks, rather. And once again, here we go. Up on the uh, from the boundary, the kick goes in and that's going to be uh, a point again. So it gets closer. It's one point separating these clubs now, and the uh, Eagles have to be really good with this kick in because if it comes right back. Nice oh, mark nice by Levesque. Yeah, as I say, even if even if the ball came right back, all they have to do is, even with the, just a, a behind, they could level the scores. But now the Eagles have it, and they're moving it forward. On the far wing right now, they've got it, and they're looking to kick ahead once again. And it goes up, and, and it looks like it's going to roll out. Question is, did it, uh, did it go over the boundary before or after it landed? Uh, looks like it's going to be a throw-in. Okay, then it uh, just... The Oh, no, it's, uh, they're giving it to Pat Miller, so it is a free kick. Free My kick, apologies. Okay. Kick out on the full, so. And the Hawks, need to, the Hawks need to definitely get back better defensively. That's been one of their, I think, oh, he kicked oh, it right in the man on the mark, which was Sayo. Uh, Not one of Patty's better kicks. No, no, too, too low and went right into the man on the mark, as you said. And as a result, it's going to be a boundary throw, and that's a terrific result for the Baltimore-Washington Eagles. And now let's see where it comes out of the ruck here. Sayo's got it once again. And uh, he's just going to run out, and we'll have another boundary throw in. So while we're uh, waiting for play to restart again, what's uh, your thought about the uh, AFL trialing the uh, last touch out of bounds? I think it's stupid. I hate it. Okay, good. We both agree on <laughs> we're that. We're in agreement. Back to the game here. Hawks trying to move it up now, kick in toward the center, and it's uh, going to bounce. And it looks like Loring's got it right now. Loring is going to handball it back. Whiting. And spoiled away there by the Eagles. Nice job there in defense as it looked like it was going to go to Glasgow. Loring's got it again now, though. Loring handballs to Glasgow. Glasgow can't handle it cleanly. I'm sorry, that's not Glasgow. Whiting. A, Whiting. Whiting now kicks it ahead, and that's heading in toward the goals. Oh, intercept mark. That was Levesque. really nice by Levesque. Former Revo player, longtime veteran of this Baltimore-Washington team, and that is a captain's uh, mark right there. Oh, nice, and a nice spoil. spoil by Whiting as Whiting gets it, but it goes over and out right about a minute to go. And the Hawks, will this be their last roll of the dice, trailing by a point? Well, if so, that play by Whiting will be huge if they're able to keep it in this side of the ground and get, get some kind of a score out of it. Let's see what happens. Ball comes spinning back in the play. Bate finds Whiting. Whiting with the handball looking for uh, McLean. Sayo is through to spoil that Egg McMuffin. And then down it goes. He covers on top of it. He is immediately beset upon by Ginsburg. And we'll have another ball up. Time quickly becoming a factor. As the ball up will come with less than a minute to go, dead out in front. The Hawks need a win here, a hit out from Bate. As the ball goes back up into the air, over the top again goes Drury. It finds oh. McQueen, couldn't claim it cleanly, and then picked up and handballed, and I think that's going to be it as Board Edwards gives it off to Levesque, and Levesque's going to, oh, the mustard came off the hot dog, but it's picked up almost by Miller. He can't control it cleanly. Just seconds to go now. Can they go? Oh, that's got to be high. No, he says play on. Handballed it over. He looks for bait, couldn't find him. Picked up on the far side by Baltimore Washington as they shake free to Strange. Strange with a long high ball over to get it off the foot of Casey. It's going to hop around. Time running out here. Picked up. They got to go. No, it's that's it. That's it. 
Wow. Full time. A frantic last couple of seconds, but the Baltimore Washington Eagles hang on by one point. Well, the, the key was, too, there um, uh, you had a player that just about had it, but I think he tried to spend it before he actually had control of it, yeah. which is why it fumbled, because otherwise he, he might have had a shot on goal there. But uh, once again, I mean, you look at the final score line here. Uh, Philly, 2618. Baltimore, Washington, 3119. You're talking about Philly had twice as many scoring shots as Baltimore, Washington, yet they lose. And once again, as, as I jokingly call it, Bill's first rule of footy, kick too many behinds, get your behind kicked, because they had twice as many scoring shots, but they're on the losing end of this battle today. Well, in the words of Dennis Cometti, uh, they would they would be kicking themselves, but they would probably miss. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to bring that one yeah, up. Yeah, I was. Uh, but, you know, I, that's something that they got to work on. They just got to have better composure around the goals. And, you know, Johnny Loring's going to be talking about that. But a great job by Danny Say. Crew. That's a team that really has improved. They were the 2008 Division I runners-up. They sank all the way down to Division IV last year for a number of reasons, but they have a strong team and a well-earned victory. It heads up to the Hawks. They have one more game against North Carolina. They both do against the Tigers, uh, but uh, the, if they play like they did today, those are going to be two good games. And so that's the final here from the uh, first game of the USAFL Eastern Regionals Tournament. The Baltimore-Washington Eagles, three goals, one behind, 19 points. And the Philly Hawks, two goals, six behind, 18 points. Coming up next, we've got more action for you as the Boston Demons take on the New York Magpies. That's coming up when we come back. You're watching the USAFL on Stateside Footy. We're back on this edition of Stateside Footy, episode number one of the seventh season of the show here. And we're getting set to show you uh, one of our perennial rivalries here, one you always see here on Stateside, and that is the New York Magpies taking on the Boston Demons, and they're all lining up right now, getting in position and getting set. In case you missed it, uh, the first game, uh, Baltimore-Washington eking past Philly. Final score, 3-1 Baltimore-Washington, 19 points. Philly, two goals, six behinds, 18 points. And uh, just discussing something really quick. At the center of the ground. Umpire's getting in position now, and we're just about ready to go here. Just a reminder, you can check us out anytime you want. We're online at www.statesidefootytv.com. You can also check out past episodes on Vimeo, vimeo.com slash statesidefooty. And up it goes. And hit out uh, to no clear advantage, though. And it looks like the Magpies will have it first. And they go to kick it ahead. And it's marked on the wing. Magpie's on the move already. And hang on, we have a rather insistent umpire here. Kick goes in now, in toward the goals. And it's going to be marked just before. Nicely done by the Demons. And they'll kick it out now, looking for and getting Sam Stranks. Stranks kicks it out and his punched away there by one of the magpies he was looking for Matt Wood goes to ground now going in there right now trying to get in anyway it's Jeremy Hum and yep indeed off the ball and it's going to be a free kick going to the magpies in the shadow of their own goal that's Harry O'Sullivan number one going back to take this one for the Magpies. This is their fourth consecutive week of footy. Their first at home as they defeated Baltimore, Washington, North Carolina, and Philly on the road in succession. O'Sullivan's kick is on the way. It is right between the big money sticks for a goal. And that's a quick jump there for the Magpies. And they lead now by a score of one straight six. Boston yet to appear on the score sheet. Of course, the game just got away, so. Mag that would be it. The Magpies are the, uh, currently ranked number two in the USAFL top 20 poll, Bill. Uh, they were number three for the first couple of weeks of the season and moved up a spot uh, thanks to their wins. Also, Orange County uh, with some early season troubles. Bo uh, Boston is currently number 13th. They've moved up a couple of spots after their big road win against uh, Quebec in the uh, P.J. Divine Cup a few months ago. And kick back once again. Uh, Magpies looking to move it through center and winds up in demon hands. Handball off. They tried to get it, uh, but couldn't successfully do it. And uh, let's see. 
Right now, the Magpies appear to have numbers near the ball. And they're looking to move it into attack. And here we go again. Here come the Pies. And he gets it to the boot. Looking to line up and almost intercept mark there. Was spoiled there. Nice job by, I believe that was Divine. But then ball went to ground and the Magpies are moving with it now. And they're just going to kick it in. Looking, oh, yeah, it looks like a behind. Yep. So that'll be a minor. So that's uh, two straight scoring shots for the home club. We talked about uh, in the last game, Bill, the Philadelphia was a rebuilding club as well as New York did last year. They were uh, in transition with new coach, uh, Sean Holmesby taking over this year, but they've responded very well and they've had some good American recruits, which is good to see from a team that's known for having a lot of uh, a very good Australian base. And of course, one of the uh, prerequisites for being the coach of the Magpies is your last name has to end with the letters SBY. Yes, uh, especially with uh, Glenn Ormsby, uh, previous coach as well. Here come the Magpies again as it was turned over on that far side. And then a long left footed kick. That one it will draw a pack. Nice, Mark. Nice. Two bites at the cherry, and he chomped the whole thing. And going back to take that is uh, number 16 for New York. And the kick will come from about, uh, let's call that about 40 meters. So he's going to walk up, walks the line like Johnny Cash, right-footed kick. That's going to die in the square. It's going to hop over everybody and bounce out. It did find the field of play, however. Boundary throw in, very advantageous for the New York Magpies, Bill. Indeed, it's in their own uh, left forward pocket here. And uh, they'll get set to move and try and score some more points here. Demons just looking to move it out and try and get something going themselves. And we've got another whistle and holding the ball. So the Magpies get pinged, Demons free kick. And it uh, goes into traffic. Matt Wood oh, hit right before he got the ball. So that was a spoil there. Kicked in toward the goals, marked right in front there. Magpies could go up by another six here. And that's actually Toby Carrington. It was Carrington uh, who took that previous mark. So Carrington, one of the Aussies on this team from straight out in front, a little Leo Messi chip shot. It is there for a goal and the Magpies extend their lead. New York, 2-1-13, Boston yet the score. You could say the name Carrington is a dynasty in footy. Yes, I get it. Oh, that's good. How many people out there do? I used to, well, you can blame my parents for that. Oh, okay. Because my parents were the ones that made me watch it. I was about five, and that's about all I remember was the last name. <laughs> I know, yes. right? Mm -hmm. What an education, said said Stacy Robert, for you. For those of you who didn't hear. Yeah, the Carrington and the Colbys. Yep. And, geez, what is Linda Evans wearing this week? Woohoo! Ball back into the middle. It's knocked out nicely again to Boston. And they almost had it for a moment. And going on to get it is one of the two number 18s out on the field for uh, – for New York, he's held up in a rugby mall situation. Ball's on the ground, it pops along like a popping popcorn Mexican jumping bean thing or other. And then the mark is taken nicely right there by number eight, which is uh, Matty G for That's Boston. Garofalo. That's Matt Garofalo up the, right, up the right side. Ball goes to ground, he's tackled. And then it's handballed back by number 10. That's Aaron. Aaron Tim Buren for the Demons. Tim Buren, thank you. Yep. And up the left side, it's nice to have somebody from the home team Matt here. Matt Wood. And it's up by Matt Wood. He definitely floated in the water on that one. So Wood, see if he can take a two by four to this one. Up that right side, and the ball will go straight out on the full, right in front of the uh, women getting ready for our next game, which will be the New York Magpies against the combined side. They're wearing the jumpers of the Columbus Jillaroos, but we have players from Boston, uh, Baltimore, Washington, Columbus, and Montreal getting set to take on a very improved New York Magpies lady side there. The Jilla Deagle Angels. Yes. You can say that, say that, uh, what is it, say that five times fast with the mouth of mashed potatoes? Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> and the boundary throw in on the far wing right now as the ball did go out of bounds while we were too busy screwing around here. <laughs> and uh, it's hit out and almost uh, right in the demon hands, but uh, Magpies have it once Murphy. again. Bit of a tackle there and uh, kick got a uh, ski jumped a little bit. Winds up rolling out of bounds. We'll have another boundary throw in not too far from the previous throw in. Mike Murphy, who kicked probably one of the best goals I've ever seen to nail the win last year in the 49th Parallel Cup for the U.S. Revolution against Canada. And uh, a man who's been around this club a long time and probably one of the hardest working players off the field uh, of anybody in the U.S. AFL. Would you say that kick had a bit of magic to it? A little bit. Uh, 
it may have even had a little bit of murph to it. There you go. Speaking of the man, he handballs it back there to number 21, which is Mick Coucher, and Coucher's uh, kick is intercepted. Up on the near side, they're going to play that into the middle. It's going to turn out to be a contest, and turning around and taking the mark was Brad Davis. Davis is going to look in short, uncontested in the goal square, and it's wow. marked again. He plays on. He's going to play on, shake and bake to the inside. Oh, it got spoiled by the right foot of the right hand of the one demon player. They handball it back, though, still danger as they kick that one in front. It rolls, almost marked down low. They go to the ground. Jonik is in there to dive after it. Boston is able to get it as it squirts free, and then kick that one up high in the air, but it's marked all alone, uncontested by Luke Schoen, and he'll have a chance from dead in front. Probably a little far out, though. He's probably going to look to connect with somebody in front. Magpies putting some numbers down by the goals, as are the Demons. Although that's uh, pretty long. Although that's going to be uh, off to the side. So it'll be 2-2-14 two, two, now for the Magpies. And the Demons so far really not just haven't hit the scoreboard yet, but really haven't had any type of sus sustained anything in their half of the ground. Well, the Magpies are getting free, Bill, and that's something that they're known for. They're very slippery. It's like 18 eels out there on the field. But that's that's just a lot of their veteran knowledge and, and what the Australians on the team are imparting to the rest of this club. Let's ball up on that far side as we have a throw-in. Uh, speaking of Chris Adams, whose son kicked two goals in that game Earlier for Baltimore, Washington, he throws the ball back in the play. Soccered on by Boston and then soccered back. And all of a sudden, I'm watching the Revolution play NYCFC. Handball, Revolution. Yep, <laughs> handball up over the top. And there's a kick, long one in there by Spataro. Nice. And the mark is taken nicely out on the wing. And he's going to play on, does uh, Andrew Davis. Davis. Andrew Davis, he'll go in short. Just got his foot to the right to try and clear it out. Does Boston up over Jonic. the top. And here is uh, well, Jonik. As he got it over to Wood, Wood with a kick into traffic there. Ball goes to ground. Nice shepherd off the ball. And then uh, just getting to it and then getting tackled on the ground. But it's going to end up being a ball up right in the middle of Tibbetts Brook Park. Getting tackled there was Jesse Galdston for the Demons. And it goes up once again and hit out uh, to try and get it to advantage. Mike Shepard had a magpie wrapped up in the tackle. And there we go, holding the ball. Free kick Demons. It's going to be taken by number five, Mike Shepard. Mike Shepard, of course, the... Uh, Eastern VP of the USAFL. He's just going to handball it to Jeremy Hum, who unloads a big, long kick. Can they get it into scoring position? They can't, as the Magpies spoil it. Toe poked ahead by Aaron Benton Buren. Really smart play. Does a nice job, too. Shepherding, uh, uh, actually, uh, one of the players off the play there. I believe that might have been Davis. And uh, Magpies take it out of trouble, though. And once again, they kick it across the face of goal. It's marked, and they're back out right now along the far wing. Coming out now, and uh, still on the far wing. Matt Garofalo tries a little bit of a handball. Winds up almost in magpie hands. Really hard footy out there right now. Everything goes to ground, and once again, the umpire is going to call for it. Ball up on that wing position. Again, the score, 14 to nothing, New York. Boston, really, I think that's their first serious sortie inside the New York uh, defending 50. Nice hit out there. Yeah, great job, but all that comes to a, uh, uh, a kick forward by uh, ball by uh, New York, and Devine couldn't get it, and it, he's going to get pinged for tackling his man off the ball, and it's called... Actually, no. He's going to get the, the free kick, does Devine. He was the one tackled. Called rightly there by Jeff Person, who is the head of referees for the USAFL, head of umpires. He looks for Hum. Hum's going to sing a song to the near side, just over the top. It was a little off tune. And then it's picked up by Wood. Wood will turn around, kick it out to the right side. And almost a mark taken there by 45, who That's is Owen, Owen I have no idea who wearing is. sunglasses. And a little handball action over to number 33, which is James smothered. Johnston. He's smothered. He's covered like some hash browns. And it's black and white jerseys as uh, Lahane gave it off to O'Sullivan, who handballs it on to uh, 38, who goes down deep. It bounces around, and it comes to Wood with a fortuitous bounce. Hum to Jonik. Jonik throws it on to the left. It's a line drive, but right at the man number 38, unlisted for New York. And he's going to kick that one straight into the middle. Well, that way well, you can't call him during a game. Nope. Brenton Hawking with it. Hawking throws it on to the right as he shimmies for through. Nice job to get it on. There's the kick. It's coming back. Is it going to curl around? Yes, yes sir. By Marcus Janke with the orange boots flashing in the sun. And New York adds to their lead, 3-2-20, Boston yet to score. We were joking before about uh, Carrington and the uh, dynasty, but uh, you, mentioned, uh, the, you mentioned a player named Hawking. Now that is a footy name. Yes. Yeah, I think that's straight out of a poetic scrapbook for Australian football players. Oh, yeah, was, I mean, especially, obviously, I'm a Cats fan. You had Buddha Hawking there. Yes. So. 
he is to Australian football what Zarley Zalapsky was to the NHL. <laughs> No, I, actually, we, actually, this is something I wanted to talk about today. Some of the uh, great names in the AFL, names of the like, real character, like uh, Steel Sidebottom and Mitch Honey. A few in the USAFL. We'll get into that in a little bit. Out of bounds on the full. Ball out on the Teresa Avenue over on the far side of the field. Brian Barish alongside Bill Robert. Great to have you along as well here on State Side Footy, the 2016 USAFL Regional Tournament. We have two divisions here, Division One, Division Two. This is the first game of Division One. The Boston Demons, the New York Magpies, and we'll see the Columbus Jackaroos a little bit later on. The Jacks played two weeks ago in the division in uh, the Central Regionals. And the kick goes in and marked in defense. Nice job there. Stretch. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he definitely did that on that ball. Yes, he did. That's the only yeah. way he was going to catch that. And uh, he touches it to ground now, and uh, he's kicked ahead looking for a target. They've got numbers there, and he's got it. Nice mark. Nicely done. Can't get a, a jersey number. He looks to be uh, one of the newer faces on the Demons, which is why I don't recognize him off the bat there. I think it was 43, it looked like, or is it 45? That might 42, be? maybe? No, 43, Michael Matera. Another footy name. Kicked ahead go. by the Demons, and marked. Hit. Nice! That's beautiful! That's a gorgeous mark. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and he came up a little bit. Uh, he came up touching his face on that one. I think he caught he caught one for his troubles. Thirty-four. That's Chris Wright for the Demons. Demons right now. Great shot at uh, their first scoring shot of the day. And roughly about six and a half minutes, give or take, here unofficially, of course. Let's see if he can kick it the right way here. Or the Hemingway, as the case may be. <laughs> we'll see her a little bit later, too. Yes, we will. And kick goes in, and that's beautiful. Yep. Demons get their first major. They needed that. They did, badly. Kind of stops the rod a little bit there as New York was on a little bit of a run. So Chris Wright with the first goal for the Boston Demons, and they are on the board, and right now the score stands. The New York Magpies, three goals, two behinds, 20 points, and the Boston Demons, one straight six. Boston uh, has picked up two main, uh, big win victory, uh, road victories in the last two years, Bill. Of course, they beat Chicago pretty handily on the road. And, uh, of course, we mentioned earlier the big win at Montreal, uh, winning by 13 points up there in Montreal. So this is a team that's capable, and they have a little bit of momentum. Unfortunately, out of the ruck, it's going to be New York that pushes it forward, getting by uh, Davis as he takes his man off the ball, handballs into the middle, Carrington, or check that, that's uh, 80, who's uh, two petty. Wow, Argus two, Angus Tupenny and getting it away. I double checked the name, kicked out in front for a goal. And you can see the dejection on the uh, Boston players. That was absolutely deflating as New York answers back. That takes them to 4 2 26. The lead is 20 points. Boston, one straight six. And they'll bring it back up to center once again and uh, tip it off. Um, I, had, I had to do a, a double check. Angus Tupenny, that's another good name. That, that's a really good one, yeah. Go ahead, mate. Yeah, no, actually. Uh, was uh, just uh, actually I don't know what uh, my, my my train of thought just derailed. But, uh, <laughs> well, they uh, they do say I am a stick in a bad place sometimes. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Ouch. And it uh, gets tossed up for grabs once again and hit up by the demons. Um, and Hum trying to work it out, not quite. And it looks like the Magpies will get the clearance as they kick it up once again, looking for they found uh, looking for a teammate, but they found Ari Jonik instead, who takes the intercept mark and he gets it to the boot, kicks it out here on the wing, and Jeremy Hum has it. Nice mark. Hum with some sure hands there, and he's going to kick it, looking for unfortunately all Magpies. Four black and white jumpers there. Yep, kicks it into a pot of Magpies, comes back now, and nice spoil. It'll come out along the boundary. It'll be a boundary throw-in. But uh, mentioning uh, Jeremy Hum last year during the game against the Philadelphia Hawks, mm -hmm. he and Rusty Smith both took nice, oh. uh, nice speckies actually climbing up the back. Uh, John Loring was the stepladder for both of those marks. Yeah, that, that's one that John. That's not exactly the highlight of Johnny Loring's 17-year USAFL career. Yeah. But uh, and we played the heck out of that clip last year, so sorry, John. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's helped out the league in other ways, so it's okay. High tackle there as uh, kind of trying to come away with it. There was. Uh, the unlisted 28, and uh, he kicked now. They're going to the far wing, looking for and not getting anyone as the ball goes over both players. Demons get it now, and uh, that's Mike Shepard with it. Mike Shepard trying to kick it back in, looking for a target. Just goes past his intended guy, goes past Joe Connor, and as a result, the uh, Magpies will kick it back now. And 
Oh, oh. Almost marked it overhead there. That was Dave Young. And the ball is loose. His opposite 22, Matt Wood is there. He gets wrapped up. He's able to handball it off. And Connor has it now. His handball right into the hands of Lahane. Dan Lahane back from down under. And he kicks it in. And uh, ball is loose. Kick toward the sticks. Janky. And that looks like that's going to be going through. Yes. Marcus Janky who last year was the best on ground for New York in the Eastern Regionals down in Florida. And the man with the bright boots has kicked his second of the game. And the score stands right now, New York 5-2-32. And Boston just a lone goal so far, one straight six. So this is what New York does against teams, especially, you know, Boston has improved, but New York is clearly on another plane. And this is what they do. They hit you on the counterattack, and they just find ways to get open and get their man. And, and if you Janky can is is really a goal sneak from just about anywhere. He can bend it. He can he can torque it any way he wants. But so the ball is back That's up in the air with about two and a half minutes to go. A whistle and an infraction in the goal square. And it's gonna out of the end of that, it's gonna be a free kick to David Schultz. Schultz says, "I know nothing," and kicks the ball in short. And the mark is taken nice defensively. Looks like by Shepard. Wow, that was a banner reference. Yes, it was. A John Banner reference. Yes, for it was. Folks out there, <laughs> kicked ahead now by the Demons, looking for and getting. Oh, that was nice. Uh, who was that? I believe that was uh, number six. There it was uh, Sam Stranks. Kicked ahead now, looking for the red and the blue, but they get the black and the white instead. And they're coming out with it once again. That's uh, actually the we. Not sure who it's going to be because we have three 17s out there. Take your pick. Well, it isn't. It's, it isn't Lahane, and it, it and it's probably ne it's probably Nico Alcade. So Jimmy Pulak is is bald. So, Dan, Dan Lahane is Dan Lahane. Yep. So so basically they've got three players right now whose jumpers are number 17. So we might have to go up to the coach at halftime and say, please, Mister, please don't play three 17s. <laughs> Uh, Bill, never change. And the ball goes out. <laughs> Hell no. Ball is taken down, and uh, it's going to be a free kick, it looks like. Yeah, went out on the full. So a uh, free kick, and over there to take it is uh, Rob uh, Rob Chap uh, Chaprut. I can't read Dennis Ryan's Chaprut. handwriting. Chaprut. We'll go with that until yeah. something is fair. Meanwhile, the ball is over there, and as P.J. Devine looks on, it's going to be a free kick to Boston. And they're going to need something here in the dying stages of this uh, of this second half. So as they uh, clear up on the far side, looks like they made a connection. Somewhere over there, yeah. And uh, they're moving the ball up here. Did uh, Looks like it might have been a 50. Yeah, someone just paid a 50. So Demon's getting uh, they're gonna have, sure he's there. They're going to have to hurry because they yep. they, there's not much time left in this first half. Hum kicks it ahead now, looking for a red and a blue target once again. And once again, he finds a black and a white target instead as the Magpies do the intercept mark. Coming out to the wing, goes off one hand, trying to give chase. He's got it now, but then gets wrapped up. Oh, Wood. Matt Wood took him down. He just got it. Did he just get it off in time? No. It was a blue. And Matt Wood gets the free kick. Matty Wood's definitely the best player for the Demons in this in this game so far. And Woody kicks it up. And another Oh, 50. 50. I think, uh, I think uh, Spataro may be... Uh, Hit for some back chat. Yeah, and and uh, I think he was saying that he was over. That he was over. And Je one thing about Jeff Person, as we mentioned, he's the head of the umpires for the USAFL Umpiring Association. Uh, he does not accept that, and he is very, very sticklerish on those. So the so the whistle's blown. This is going to come after the siren. And Wood belts it. That's coming back. It might be. No. Oh, just on the line. It's a goal. Oh, who's it there? Over the line. They marked it. It's a goal. They awarded it. Wow, that was very close. And the goal umpire was Johnny on the spot. I Matt believe, Wood. I believe that's Bruce Rogers. With a kick. No, not. No, I'm no, sorry. no. Bruce is wearing an orange yeah. sleeve. And uh, right now, Jeff Pearson talking to us, Pataro, about that call there. But uh, that last uh, set of possessions there, a couple of 50s going to the Boston Demons, helped him out there. And uh, after the siren, the kick from Matt Wood, just getting over the line before it was touched, and it results in another major score for the Demons. And there we are at halftime with the score. The New York Magpies, five goals, two behind, 32 points. And the Boston Demons, two goals straight, 12 points. We'll be back with second half action next. You're watching the USAFL's Eastern Regional Tournament. You're watching it right here on Stateside Footy. Australian rules football in the U.S.? That's right. The United States Australian Football League is in a city near you. Go to USAFL.com, find your team, check them out. 
We're a group full of men and women just like you. Join us for the fun athletic competition. Stay for the camaraderie. We might be champions! Log on and sign up to join your team at USAFL.com. Second half about to start here. We've got the uh, Boston Demons and the New York Magpies, and right now the home club is off to a sizable lead, a 20-point lead. Score right now the Magpies 5-2-32, and the Demons two straight kicks 12. And uh, once again, so far, Magpies, as they have been doing, have been uh, pretty dominant. You mentioned, Brian, that they're the second uh, team right now as far as the USAFL rankings. Who are they second to? The Austin Crows, who are 10-0 this season, oh, wow. including a 4-0 start, uh, uh, a 4-0 perfor a 3-0 performance rather at the 2016 Central Regionals in Indianapolis. And I'll tell you what, Bill, I, I, there there's some good teams in the USAFL. I don't know if anyone can beat them. Up he goes once again, and out of the ruck, winds up going to the pies, and that's a big spinning kick ahead, and. Almost winds up in P.J. Devine's hands. He's able to get it now and handballs it off. And then uh, trying to get it there and getting tackled with it, that's Quartz. No idea who Quartz is, but uh, <laughs> I guess you'd say the ball's been through the Quartz. <laughs> kind of like Tom Brady. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but anyway, as it comes out through here. Yeah, the only difference is that ball has air. Yes. That's, hey, the other ball had air, too. Oh, uh, Homer. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Don't. And uh, the ball gets tossed back in and uh, held right back up, so the umpire will call for it once again. That joke went through quite an odyssey. Oh, jeez. There we go. Jeff Person will throw the ball back up in the play. <laughs> and, and, yeah, go ahead. Hit out to advantage by the Demons. Hopefully, yep, he's got it now. And they kick it ahead, but once again into Magpie hands. Seems anytime the Demons have a long kick, it winds up in Magpie hands. They're taking a bunch of intercept marks today. And they kick it back now and going for the intercept mark there. Not quite uh, getting it once again as Quartz. And here we go. Big kick from the Demons along the wing and almost intercepted. Taken there by Rob Chaprut once again for the Magpies. Intercept mark. Nice job there. That's number 27. That's Rory. So I believe that might be Rory Smith who kicks it over. And it winds up in the hands of Matt Wood. Matty Wood might come down with a case of leather poisoning. He has probably, that's probably about his 15th touch. And that's Matt to Matt as Matt Garofalo has it now after that kick from Matt Wood. Matty G with it now. And he'll put it to the boot and try and get it in. And once again, the Magpies take the intercept mark, and they'll just move it into attack as they handball it ahead. And here we go once again. Magpies on the march. Handball over. Here we go. Handball back. He's on the boundary. And he's, he oh, runs he was out. over the boundary. He runs over the boundary, well over the boundary. That was a great run. <laughs> it was a great run. But then I, I saw him going. I'm like, where's he going? And sure enough, he went, went over the boundary. I mean, if you think about it, it's still a good result for the Magpies because it's still a throw-in in there uh, just about at their forward pocket. But uh, – once again, you know, he had some space to go and just went a little wide of the line there. While we're speaking about rules, what do you think of the deliberate rule? I don't. Okay. I think that's a good way. I'm glad we don't have it here in the USAFL. Spataro will paddle it on forward or try to anyway. And then a one-on-one -on -one contest there, getting around with it and throwing over. And now he's going to be claimed as getting the ball was Nick Walker. But, in fact, he was tackler or faller or something. And that was Dave Morton with it. Now he kicks and connects with his target. And the Demons now taking it out along the ground. Oof. Spoiled there and knocked out of bounds. And we'll have another boundary throw in on the far wing. Early second half action here between New York and Boston. Right now the Magpies up 32-12 to 12 as the throw in comes in. And once again, the Rucks get to work. And it's uh, bounced out. No real clear advantage. Although the Demons seem to come away with the clearance now as they kick it into territory. And oh, oh. almost marked there. But uh, once again, the Magpies able to turn it around almost. And we've got a free kick. Yeah, tackling without the ball there, and it was James Pulak who was taken down, the uh, grizzled veteran uh, fullback for the for the Magpies. And he kicks it off, and it's uh, another mark now, and uh, they bring it through. And they're just going to do it slow and deliberate and chain some possessions together. He gets it to the boot now, and that's Good mark, mark. too. Nice mark there. That's number 84. That's Andrew Davis. And he kicks it ahead now, and they can't quite connect. It's punched ahead and goes toward the boundary. Kept in by Jonak. He's able to kick it along the line, and it's marked there. Nicely done. And that's Michael Matera. And Matera will kick it now. Shanked a little bit. Takes a hop. Winds up back in Magpie hands there as it goes to a David Schultz. But then we got a free kick going to the Demons. He's giving him all. Oh. No, no, he wasn't. It was, it was close, but he didn't give him a 50. Yeah. 
I was wondering about that, but uh, bit of a shepherd there. Davis. Yep. And handball to head goes off of set of hands, and the Demons have it momentarily. Tried to get it into the hands of uh, Sam Strikes, but just couldn't do it. Now it goes out wide, and the Magpies have it again, and they'll move it. Kicked ahead now, and marked. In the back. Well, I think he had, he had control of it anyway, so so either in mark or in the back, and uh, winds up going there to Davis. And now with it, Jeremy Hum. Hum runs around a couple of players, handballs it out, and here we go. Big kick up into the Demons' half of the ground. A little too high, though, but... Looked like uh, Aaron Ten Buren there trying to get at it. He was able to uh, grab it, but then he was tackled himself. No prior opportunity, though, so as a result, they'll just ball it up once again. And it comes out and punched ahead. But it looks like it's going to wind up in magpie hands, and we have multiple 17s out there again. So apparently uh, my Olivia Newton-John reference went for not. Yep. Matera's got it now. Matera, handball right into magpie hands. Gets smothered, and then, oh, boy. Ooh. That was close. Hum has it now, and that's uh, that's a bit of a hummer, but that's going to go well wide, and that looks like it's going to be out on the full. Or is it? Yeah, it's yeah, out. Out on the full. Yeah, uh, uh, Magic Murphy there was bent backwards, and uh, I don't think there was anything in it as uh, he and Jeremy Hum came over and just shared a little high vibe. But that was that was that's a rough tackle, and that was uh, he was not in it. He was in a pretty awkward position. Actually, it looks like it's gone through for a behind as they signal the flag. Oh, okay. So that was, it was pretty close, but uh, that's Boston. They score the first point of the game. That takes them to 2-1-13, New York 5-2-32. Well, first point of the second half. I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, you know. It's all, we're the first point of the ball game. We're the first point of either Nice or. mark there. Jeremy Hum once again. And he'll get it to the boot there. Just humming along and spoiled. A nice job there by uh, Paul Garino. And Demon's still with it right now, trying to move it ahead. And loose ball along the ground. And magpie ball now. A lot of action down near the far boundary, and it looks like it'll go out. We'll have a boundary throw in. Second half action. You're watching the Eastern Regional Tournament from the USAFL right here on Stateside Footy. And right now at the second half, uh, we are standing at a 32-13 to 13 score between the New York Magpies and the Boston Demons as the ball comes back into play and goes back out into play. I'd like to remind you at this time that if you'd like to check us out online, uh, we are on Vimeo. It's uh, Stateside Footy. It's uh, vimeo.com slash statesidefootytv. And uh, tap back in once again. Ooh. He is hauled down after he let go of the ball. I believe that was Strank's kick going in. And uh, it's going to be a good result for the Demons. As it'll be out, it'll be a boundary throw-in. But it'll be a boundary throw-in in the Demons' left forward pocket. So See? if they can just get it to somebody and get it to a quick boot, maybe they can uh, continue to cut into this magpie lead. And we've got another whistle. And it's a free, free kick, kick to, to, the the demons. to the Demons. That's a huge call. I didn't see what it was initially, but might have been a ruck infringement. Jesse yep. Goldston will have the uh, will have the ball here. Is it? It's a big kick. It is a big kick because they need they they need they need to claw themselves into it. And that is a that's oh just before the line over the back. It's a goal. There we go. Wow, that's very that's very Pat Foley. Woo! He scores. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was, so that is the close. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Here I am going through. Hello, Mrs. Brady. <laughs> so cold to the team. I say, I'm Mr. Bill. I'm the one supposed to have the oh, high pitched voice oh here. My. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 3-1-19 <laughs> for Boston. Five, it's two, back 32. to a 13. It's back to a 13 point. That is the closest thing you'll see to a bicycle kick in Aussie yeah. Rules football. <laughs> Not a popular oh. show, but a funny show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Back in the middle we go, and New York is going to try and answer. They did the last time. That's a long kick, but uh, it's oh, called an advantage. Yeah. And he's pointing, I think, to where the ball's going to go. Yeah, it's going to be a, a free kick. Yeah, it's going to look like it's going to be a free kick. Yeah, so it looks like it was an infringement downfield. Jeff Person right on the spot blowing for it. And so the kick will come from Toby Carrington. Who's already got a goal today. And he's going to look for number two. So here is Carrington, one of the many Aussies on this team. Centering ball or check side kick? I think it's a check. I think it's a banana. The kick is on the way. It is that was dead beautiful. center perfect. That was beautiful. Arguably the goal of the day. And New York once again has an answer for a Boston goal as they double the lead. New York 6-2-38. Boston 3-1-19. And that was the thing, you know, sometimes when you, when you go from that uh, part of the ground, 
it's a, just a question of, uh, you know, check side or centering ball. So that's, you know, but beautiful. Just hit that one right uh, and bent it right through. That was a beautiful kick. Toby thought he, he channeled uh, Kim Hemingway on that. Uh, yeah, yeah York. in fact, it was the same ground but opposite side yeah. last year when they played. Uh, well, no, she had a free kick from over oh, right, here. Yeah, right, right did, in yeah. that, that same pocket. Yeah. But she had a great kick also from the opposite yeah. side against San Francisco. And uh, the ball at center still. And uh, Strikes has it now. He's able to kick it out and... It's going to take a high bounce, and big collision there. Demons have it, and handball ahead. He's just going to try and get it to the boot. That's Ten Buren. It goes wide, though, and uh, being shepherded off the ball there is Galston. Galston, who uh, kicked the last goal, and we've got a whistle. Free kick. Free kick Boston. Well, here we go again. But the other thing is, obviously, they started running away with the ball and getting it, so so at what, what point does that become... And that's, that's one of those things, too, where you see this in the AFL, too, depending on the umpire. Some umpires have tri itchy trigger fingers when yeah. it comes to 50s. But either way, it is Jesse Galston. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, again, a very important kick. Still about halfway to go, but Galston's kick, it is not a good one. It's off to the left. But it's marked in front. And he's going to turn around. And kick it right through. Yep. Just picking it up here. But uh, in any event, that's another goal to the Demons. I uh, didn't see uh, I didn't see the number, uh, but I think uh, let's see, um, 46 I believe was who kicked that one. Stretch. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what Boston is trying to do: is stretch themselves back into this game. The margins back to 13 points. New York 6-2-38. Demons 4-1-25. You know the Demons uh, they've really sort of thrown into another gear here in the mm -hmm. second half, which is very important against a team like New York. But the question is: is will they be able to come back with the time remaining? That's the thing because they still need three unanswered straight kicks to win this thing. So it uh, comes back now to center. And uh, just a reminder that uh, we'll be here all day bringing you a whole bunch of games. Obviously, this is the last game in this episode of Stateside Footy, but we'll be back. And uh, next time up, there's going to be a massive women's game between uh, the New York Magpies and an assembled team of basically th four women's footy clubs, which we'll get into in a little bit. Magpies get it back, and they're looking once again. Any time the Demons score, it seems the Magpies get it right back. But uh, that was marked by the Demons. Kicked over and uh, out on the full. Free kick Magpies. Uh, that's a, that's, you can't be making mistakes like that against the Magpies when you're down. But here they come back the other direction as that's a high ball. Mark! Oh, Mark! Jeremy Hum! Another specky. He did one last year on Loring, and he did one right there, too. Mark of the day out to the near side. He and it's finds Mark. Handball to Jonik. Might have sold him into trouble a little bit there as Jonik had to get rid of it in a hurry. And uh, loose ball down. And, uh, he's handballed it off. Now Davis has it. Kicks it over, and it's just going to bounce, and it looks like Stranks might get there first, but then he's harassed by a couple of magpies, and they'll get it out. And here we go. They're on the move once again with it now is Luke Sheen. He kicks it in toward the sticks, and just trying to uh, get it there is Dave Morton. Morton's got it now after a valiant effort to try and dive and stop that one from going through. And, Ooh. oh, pushing the back. So Sam Stranks will get the free kick, and it uh, looks like they're not paying advantage. Yeah, no. <laughs> no advantage. That's how he always talks. <laughs> now there's, they're looking at it. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now they're asking yeah, They're us asking stuff. us. <laughs> hey, Mike, we haven't installed replay yet. <laughs> there's, they haven't built a booth here yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Go all the way back to Sam Strengths. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't call advantage. And Seb DeMauro, who's uh, from Montreal, who's uh, down here photographing, he said he got it. I'll tell you what, that was pretty close. <laughs> I don't think you can call pushing the back on your own on your own person. Yeah, or for that matter, you know, call a 50 for, you know, not getting in the ball in time. <laughs> oh, insane scenes here at Tibbetts Brook Park as um, it comes it over to Davis. Davis with a kick, uh, just a little bit of a grubber there. Dave Morton, nice job there standing up to that shepherd. And he's just going to see the ball over the line, it looks like. Nope, it's still, no, it's still in. in. Just, and now it's out. Right in front of the behind post. Yeah, so obviously still a good <laughs> result for the uh, Magpies as they get the throw in really close, just in the shadow of their attacking goals. That's funny. That's very funny. Oh, my gosh. And let's see. Bounces off a bunch of players. And uh, Demon's looking to work it out of trouble now. They turn it into attack. With it now, that, that's Galston. And ball off, and here come the Ds. That's a nice kick. That'll come right through center. And it bounces and winds up being taken by the Magpies, who just kick it right back into their attacking territory. And it's marked there 
by the anonymous 28. Yeah, a lot of uh, Jeremy Howe impersonations here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, Jeremy Howe, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Hum, there you go. Kick oh, on you the know. way. Oh, it's that's there. A goal. That's a huge goal. And I think that I think that just about wraps it up for the Magpies. Well, once again, we're going to go across sports here. We're going to channel Mike Lang for a second, ladies and gentlemen. Elvis, Elvis has, has left, left the, the building. building. Yes. Nice stereo on that. And somewhere over there is Stephanie McKittrick warming up for uh, for the Columbus Jillaroos, who is a huge Penguins fan. And, and they just won the Stanley Cup. Uh, don't don't remind me about that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Seven two forty four New York four one twenty five for Boston. About five minutes to go. But then again, you know. Bruins won a few years ago, and uh, with the day they had the parade, I got to interview Brett Kirk. Yes, you did. Oh, we got a whistle. S square infraction. And, think, oh. and that's going to be a free kick going to the Demons there. Five players in the goal square, and so they have that goal, I'm sorry, in the center square, and you can only have four players. If anyone, even if their toe is in there, then, then it's an infraction, and it'll be a free kick to Boston. Time to call a tow truck and get them out. Over. Kick goes in uh, toward the forward 50 for the Demons, and it uh, goes off of a sea of hands and then comes back out, it looks like. Magpie's still trying to work. A bunch of bodies going to ground, and someone gets slung down, and it's a free kick to the Demons, and they did not, did, nope, they didn't pay advantage. No. Now, Jeff Person has been pretty vigilant about that. So, free kick from straight out in front for Boston. And again, you know, they're getting these chances, Bill. I, I, you know, Boston has, has not played a bad game. They've played a very good game. Actually, I'm sorry, it's a free kick. No, it is a free kick. It's a free front. kick, yeah. And it's uh, 34, it looks like. Yeah, 34. Chris Wright. Chris Wright, yep. Who's so, already got a goal. Yep. Yeah, they, I mean, they're playing fantastically. So, here comes Wright. The kick is uh, uh, not the go best. It's going not line, right, but it's still a scoring shot. But left, yeah. and it's through for their second behind of this game. That's four two twenty six. Actually, no, you're uh, yeah, you're right. Yep. You're right. Yep, second. That's why there's two of us. Yes. Uh, four eighty four twenty six is the score. Yeah, because um, I've been known to gag that up before. Yeah, I've actually had to re-record play by play tracks because oh, I I totally bollocked up the score. Yeah, Boston's playing well. I think you know, and they can't be upset at this performance, even though New York's probably gonna gonna see it out here. Yeah. But it's it's rare that many teams get get this much territorial possession on the Magpies, and I right. think that's got to be a, a good uh, in the in the good tick box. Tick and box. I think uh, let's see here, um, ball in. once again, yep, ball uh, uh, boundary throw in here, tossed back in, time running out. Demons need some points, and they need them fast. That's uh, way out on the heads. <laughs> I'm like heads up, yeah, because it was coming right for uh, our emplacement here. Which would be kind of an interesting, and the kick goes in, and it's coming out, and Stacy Duck! <laughs> <laughs> She's shaking her head. I can't believe I married this hamster. And she said, no, that's not a duck. That's. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put a mic on her. Oh, my gosh. Actually, she's she's like the TV star now. Oh my goodness, she's the she's the brains of this operation. Janky the Mark goes out to the far side. It's gonna go over, hop, and taken by Andrew Manfredi, who was playing for the Hawks in the first game, and the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll be a boundary throw in that pocket. Again, the score is 44-26. The lead is 18 points to the Magpies. Both of these teams will, you'll see later today playing the Columbus Jackaroos. And as I started to say before, Bill, they played three games in Division One against very tough uh, in the Central Regionals against very tough opposition against uh, Austin, Dallas, and um, and Denver, and they held their own against all three teams. So it'll be good to see how they play here. Meanwhile, New York will bring it up on the far side as they try to pad their lead. That's a one-on-two. Wooden oh, Jonah can bird. Converge. It's picked up and juggled around. Jonik has it. He just throws it on to the left because that's really the only thing he could do. And then picking it up is Harry O'Sullivan, almost like Harry Windscreens O'Brien, who played for Collingwood way back in the day. The play continues, and then it's soccered on the ground. No mark, but Wood did a good job of picking that up off a plate of a blade of grass. The vine swings it around to Hum. Hum with a handball into the middle. They're really they're really too tight in as Boston, but and and. The Magpies will swoop in upon them. Play on again, says the umpire. The ball goes to ground, and now they're playing aggro twister. And now out of it is a right foot again by Janky. Jonick chases it and takes a nice defensive mark. Boston will have a chance to sh shake the etch -a sketch in the waning moments of the second half. And it comes out and look. Oh, it's marked. Nice job there. And that's Quartz once again. He's got the mark right near the far boundary. He kicks it up the line, and it's marked once again. Demons right now chaining some possessions together, trying to move it back into their attacking half but they're just being deliberate about it. Uh, 
not looking to rush the ball too much. And it's spoiled, knocked away by the Magpies, but then punched ahead by the Demons once again and uh, headed toward the hands of uh, Rory Smith, who now uh, is dispossessed. And ball goes back to ground. There's a race for it now. And, oh, nope. They, they wanted improper disposal, but the uh, umpire said no. And I wanted a million Nice spoil dollars. there. I believe that was P.J. Devine who got in that. Yep. But the uh, Magpies still relentless coming back with it. And once again, they're coming through center, going right through the corner. Lining up a target is going to take a bounce. Jo Jonik in there in defense. He'll take him right down and then try and move the ball ahead. Magpie's still with it right now. And it'll just be kicked back as he'll try and reset. It'll take a hop so it won't be a mark so he doesn't. He can't take the time with a free kick, and he just delivers it right into the forward 50. Goes over everyone, and that's going to be it, I believe. No, it's a push in the back okay. one, Jonik. Okay. Uh, and that and that was close, but uh, good call there. And, and Jonik, I, you know what? I think there wasn't a whole lot in it, but they're going to play on. They give to Davis. Davis's kick is Bang. right there. That's a goal, and it's on the siren. It's a goal. Count it. It is a goal. Yes. And New York hits the half ton right on the, right on the siren. So the Magpies run out winners. It was a good good effort by Boston. Very but, good effort by but Boston. New York, much the best, proving why they are the number two team in the country. Well, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, the Demons, obviously, Matt Wood, you mentioned him already. He's always one of the consistent players. And last year, uh, one of the players who came up and who showed a lot this uh, this game, too, was, was Jeremy Hum. I mean, yeah. even in, in the um, in the middle of action, there's just no way to get him off his game. So I guess you can say there's no rattling Hum. No, no, no. He definitely sung loud and clear on that one as yeah. we check for Stacey Roberts' approval on those jokes. <laughs> but once again, the final score here in the first game of Division One our second game of the day. The New York Magpies, eight goals, two behinds, 50 points. The Boston Demons, four goals, two behinds, 26. Uh, heads up to Boston. New York, though, much the best here. And uh, a pretty good game of footy and a good start for the Magpies, who have now won four games in a row to start this 2016 season. And that's going to do it for this episode of Stateside Footy, but uh, we're not done here by any stretch of the imagination. Coming up in our next episode, we'll start out with an 18-on-18 women's match. And it's going to be the New York Magpies, the home club. Going up against the Angel of Deagles. There we go. <laughs> it's basically it's a composite side of the Montreal Angels, the Columbus Jillaroos, the Boston Lady Demons, and also the Baltimore Washington Lady, Lady Eagles. So, yes, there we go. The Angel of Deagles. Try saying that one five times fast. With a mouth of mashed potatoes? Right. Just remember, uh, you can ch check us out online. Visit our website at www.statesidefootytv.com. Also, you can check us out on Facebook under Stateside Footy TV. Follow us on Twitter. It's Bill R underscore SS Footy. Until next time, on behalf of my co commentator, Brian. Brian Barish and our camera person, Stacey Robert. I'm Bill Robert, wishing you a terrific day and thanking you for watching Stateside Footy.